Hey folks, it's Rob Flux here with another Ask Rob Anything, and that's where an annual member of ours can actually uh, submit their question through to me, and I'll do my very best to actually answer that question. Uh, and today we've got Jeff. So Jeff, mate, how are you, mate? How are you, Rob? How are you all? I'm fantastic, man. It's clearly very cold where you are because you're yeah. wearing your beanie. Uh, mate, I'm wearing my jacket. It's freezing day today. Yeah, a little bit uh, colder than uh, Brisbane. Uh, so you're Brisbane based, but you're in, in Grafton at the moment. Just for the temporary trip uh, to New South Wales. Okay. Well, mate, that uh, no longer in the Sunshine State. Um, so, mate, uh, you and I have had a bit of a chat off air, and I know what your problem is, uh, but our audience yet doesn't know the problem. So why don't you give me a little bit of an explanation about uh, what the problem is, uh, what you were trying to do, and how you discovered the problem? Yeah, the problem is when my house lift up and then I walk in and see whether it's the correct position and just my head just hit the steel pin, can't walk inside properly. And but, then I but, realize. So you've tried to lift your house up so you can actually build underneath it. Yeah. Um, and they've finished the lift process and you've walked in and you've and you're not a very tall man. I'm a very tall man, right? Um, uh, and you've nearly bumped your head on the yeah. steel beams. So they've not lifted the house high enough. Is that correct? Yep, no, yeah, that's right. Okay, so now uh, with, a, with a situation like this, there's lots of people that are involved, okay? There's yeah. a surveyor who did the original survey. There's the draftsman or the, or the architect who actually did the design. There's the builder who actually did the lift he would have engaged another surveyor. So there's lots of people in the in the food chain that might have actually made a mistake. So what we're going to try and do here is we're going to try and work out where the mistake might have happened, okay? And we have to say might because we're not trying to lay blame here. We're just trying to work out whether or not uh, who the right person is for you actually to try and talk to, okay? Yeah, um, and, then, and then subject to who that person is, what are the kinds of questions you can ask them so that you could see if you can actually get this rectified, okay? So firstly, uh, the surveyor will do a survey of the land and he gives that to the draftsman, okay? Then the draftsman does his design, gives that to the builder. The builder goes and gets another surveyor in to make sure that he's building exactly in the exact location that the, that the draftsman or the architect actually said, the designer said, okay? So they're the people involved. Now, when the builder comes in, his surveyor would actually be sanity checking the original survey. Now, did his, did the builder indicate that the original survey was incorrect? Uh, the builder say, uh, just say the survey normally is correct. Okay, so um, so... His surveyor has said that the first surveyor is incorrect, which means that either the builder didn't follow the plan or the plan uh, that he, or he did follow the plan and the plan was incorrect. That's kind of, uh, the, I guess, the two potentials here. Now, yeah. uh, have you done your tape measure and, and measured to see whether or not the, the height that the builder has done, uh, has that matched the plan? Yeah, I think. I did take, uh, make a, a take a measure and I recognized there's uh, 400 millimeters difference. 400 and, millimeters difference. And the builder and do the measure as well. And he told me that still if on the, uh, the high at the moment, and then that, that there won't be enough for the, sewage outlet yeah so because sewage being underneath needs uh, uh, and it's still um, 210 millimeter yeah up and at least yeah because it needs time for the s-bend and all that yeah. sort of thing underneath and uh and needs to have gravity. Of, yeah, yeah, lots of lots of things like that so uh, it's too low now, and then by the time you put that false ceiling in, it's going to be even lower again. So, so it's clear that that it looks like, and and I want to be very clear that we're not trying to lay blame here, but it looks like it might be the the design itself that might not be accurate. 
Does that sound does that sound like where you're thinking at the moment? Yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Okay. So I guess if that's the case, what we need to do is we need to talk to the the, the designer. Was it a designer or an architect? Uh designer. Okay. So when we talk to the designer, there's a couple of things that we've got to be very clear on. Okay. So firstly, we would have given the designer. Um, I guess our requirements for the work. Okay, now that is typically done in a written form called a statement of works or a scope of works. Okay, now did you give them a scope of works to say exactly what you needed underneath the house? I we just I just uh, get the designer come to the side and just uh, have a chat about that kind of situation. Okay, so he's come to site and he's gathered your um, requirements just through conversations, yes? Yeah, Have you got that. anything in writing that has actually said what that needs to be? Uh, no, it seems, seems there's sometimes uh, com confusing and, and on some, uh, there's a hard, uh, that, the kind of situation I just I just ring the designer. I said that's a big problem, and that that's not the real. Yeah. But, real yeah. But when he did the design, mm -hmm. he would have given you a quote, and the quote would have said, "This is what I'm designing to." Right. So he would have given you a whole bunch of dot points. This is what's in scope. This is what's out of scope. Have you gone and reviewed that just to make sure that? Um, that it actually says, look, it's going to be a habitable area, legally habitable area underneath. Is that is that inside the the scope of works at all? Uh, oh, that this uh, relate to another uh, old building, an another room because there's not the whole uh, whole property, I mean whole building, because there, there's still some old building uh, connected together. That's so make... Uh, so he's made changes to one half of the building and not the other half of the building. Yeah, yeah, left uh, another... But still the, still yeah. the paperwork... Yeah, it could. For, for, the, for him to design, he still would have said, look, this is what I'm trying to achieve for you. Mm -hmm. um, and in his quote, it would have said, this is what's in scope and this is what's out of scope, so that it's yeah. very clear. So I would be going and going back and looking at that original scope of works and making sure that it's very clear that what he was trying to do was a legally habitable height, okay? Um, now, legal habitable height is very different to workable height because everyone's different height. You're it, you're, you're one height, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a very tall man. Um, yep. So the legal habitable height uh, uh, is based on the National Construction oh, Code. On the yeah. another side is uh, legal, uh, livable height, but on an, uh, the, with the old one, there's not the uh, match what uh, the design plan. So, so for me, for, for I talk to the designer, yeah, ask. Okay. It, it's another uh, uh, question. Yeah, it sounds to me, without seeing that scope of work, and that's the tricky part here, and, and I can't give you legal advice, okay? Um, but it seems to me that one of the things that I would do is look at that scope of works and make sure that, that, that you were very clear with exactly the outcome that you were actually after, yeah. and then have a conversation with him to say, look, it, you knew what I was after. The, yeah. the paperwork says this is what I was after. But yeah. what you gave me was not that. Yeah, okay. that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Now, if that's the case, if that's the case, then it, then that would be um, a very clear he's made a mistake, and that happens. People make mistakes, and you know we can't uh, we, we can't uh, always be perfect uh, as much as we would like to. Um, but then the question is, what are they going to do to fix the mistake? Okay. Now, if they are. Uh, um, if they're, I'm trying to think what the right words here, but if they're uh, customer focused and they want to do the right thing, then they'll just fix the problem. So they'll redesign and they will pay 
for the remediation works because the builder did exactly what he was told. Yes. It's not his yes. fault. Um, yeah. uh, so if if they if they're very customer focused, they will just pay. Okay. Um, sometimes they want to be customer focused, but they don't have the money because cash flow is poor, those sorts of things. And so they might go, I'd love to help you, Jeff, but I, I just can't because I haven't got any money. Right. Um, now, if that's the case, then this with, with a polite conversation, you might say, look, you've got professional indemnity insurance to protect you from when you make mistakes. Uh, it might be uh, it might be an opportunity for us to actually put a claim against their professional indemnity insurance. Then, then the the designer is not going to be out of pocket, but his insurance policy will. Okay, so that's what his insurance policy is for: is that professional indemnity insurance is when he makes a mistake. Okay, um, now that means that his insurance policy is going to go up next year, but it's only going to go up that much compared to giving you a lot of money to fix the problem. So he, you know, that's going to cost that much. Uh, so that's probably what I would be doing is trying to review that scope of works first. Okay, make sure that that you are very clear that what you asked for is actually in the document. Okay, um, you will probably want to seek legal advice um, to to make sure that that you are legally able to 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 do something if you need to. Okay, um, I would try not to to send the lawyers in first. Because if you can have a person-to-person -person conversation, you're going to have a much better outcome than if you have lawyers come in uh, and start beating them up straight away, right? So person-to-person -person conversation is going to be, I guess, much better in the first place. Sure. And, and then know that you've got the legal position if that's... Um, uh, if that's needed later on, okay? But, but hopefully you don't need that. Uh, and it would be, hey, can you fix the problem for me? Uh, and if you can't fix the problem, can we put a claim against your uh, professional indemnity insurance? Sure. Wow. Does that all make sense, mate? Yeah, yep. Thanks, thanks Rob. Yeah. Okay, mate. Um, well, I'm glad. I'm not sure that it, this is a tricky one. Um, yeah, because... I reckon that this is the, the uh, really uh, class example and, 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 and the advice uh, you, you are provide. Yeah. You're good yeah but as i said mate if you can try to keep it at very personable level uh you know relationships yeah, yeah. we are all in a relationships game everybody makes mistakes um good business owners will do what they can to fix their mistakes uh of their own accord um if it if it genuinely does end up being that way that that we can prove that that it is their mistake um be open to the fact that this little assessment that we've had, had here may be maybe the builder is trying to protect himself maybe he's said that the survey was right yeah. so it could be that the that the designer is right so we don't want to go in and blame them we just want to have an open conversation yeah, yeah. Um, still going uh going uh keep going and be but yeah. just see how to fix the problem as uh, uh because probably we might have another project uh, next time and uh, absolutely you, you might have another project so you don't want to you don't want to burn relationships and that sort of thing um at the moment though you've not laid the slab downstairs yet so yeah, oh yeah uh, next week actually yeah next week oh, okay and, well, uh, well you want to try, yeah, last... try and have this conversation yeah. before you lay the slab because otherwise you're gonna have to tear the slab up so that's going to be even more expensive okay so i would have this conversation today or tomorrow let them know hey there's a big problem here and if we yes. yep. if we keep going we will. We will. The, yep. the, the bill's going to be a bigger bill right yeah so i would have that conversation as quick as humanly possible mate um That's keep an right. open mind because yep. um and i'm not you know i don't want to be blaming the designer and i don't want to be blaming the builder here but if if there's a if their mistake was by the builder he might be trying to protect himself and he might have said the survey is right so we're we're making an assumption yeah. at the moment okay yeah. um yeah. so yeah. be yeah. careful yeah. not to blame blame yeah. is going to cause lots of problems yeah. 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 Uh, we're working out see where, where uh what is the real problem yeah absolutely very good mate well i'm hoping that helps <laughs> a very tricky very one today careful. folks yeah okay very, very tricky one today folks but yeah. hey 
Uh, if you are an annual member out there and you've got a problem that you would like some assistance with, um, make sure that you click on the links below. Uh, you can submit your question to Ask Rob Anything uh, and I will do my very best to try and help yeah. you. So yeah. until then, uh, I'm going to say bye for now. So bye, everyone. Yes. See you, Jeff. Yes. You have okay. bye. Bye.